In this section, we're going to talk about what we call the antiderivatives and the definite integral. All right, I want to first talk about the definition of an antiderivative. An antiderivative of a function f of x is the function that has f of x as its derivative. We denote the antiderivative as capital F of x. And so I want to look at an example. When we want to find the antiderivative, we want to find the function whose, if I took the derivative, I'd end up with this function here, right? So example one, it says, if f of x equals 2x, what is capital F of x? And that's the notation for antiderivative. And so in other words, this is asking, find the function whose derivative with respect to x is 2x, all right? And I'll tell you that a function whose derivative is 2x, one that works for us is x squared, right? And I can check to make sure that that actually is true by doing f prime of x, capital F prime of x, right? Well, if f of x, capital F of x is x squared, if I do its derivative, it is 2x. And so now I know that I have correctly found an antiderivative for this function. Okay? All right. Question one says, are there other functions that will work for capital F of x in example one? And I'm going to say yes. And the reason I know the answer to that one would be yes is because I know that the derivative of a constant equals zero. So I could use f capital F of x equals x squared plus 2, for instance, right? I'm going to check it again, right? If I check that, if I do f, capital F prime of x for our antiderivative, uh, the derivative of that, I'll bring that 2 out front, and I have a 2x to the first power. I don't have to write that one. And then I take the derivative of 2, which is 0 since it's a constant. And so this also works for a antiderivative for f of x equals 2x. So in other words, there are multiple antiderivatives for the function. I can come up with another one. x squared minus 1. I can come up with one x squared plus 0.75, right? I can come up with a bunch of them. And in fact, we'll end up with what we call a family of functions that would represent the antiderivative of our function f of x that we started with, right? A family of functions. And so my antiderivative is always going to be pretty much the function x squared plus or minus some constant, all right? And it's because the derivative of a constant is zero, all right? And so note, we can write the most general antiderivatives of 2x as f of x equals x squared plus c, where c is a constant. And what I mean by constant, I mean it's an actual number, some number. I'm going to use my pound sign for number. All right? And so what I want to do is I want to look at some more examples. We're not going to go through all the examples on this sheet. Um, some I'm going to leave for you to try to turn in for the extra credit. Um, but I want to do uh, find the antiderivatives of the following functions. And so in part A, I have f of x equals 7. And so I want to find the antiderivative. I've got to think, what function has a derivative equal to 7? And one function that comes to mind, well, if I... I got to think about what function has a derivative that equals a constant. And remember, from our derivative rule, differentiation rules, the only way we're going to get a constant is when we have a linear function and we take the derivative of a linear function because its derivative is its slope. And so the antiderivative, capital F of x, is going to equal 7x. All right, that's 1. And remember, I can do 7x plus 1, 7x minus 1, 7x plus 3, 7x minus a half, so on and so forth. And so I get the antiderivative of this as 7x plus some constant c. And remember, we can always check ourselves by taking the derivative of our antiderivative. All right, the derivative of my antiderivative, well, 
That's a linear term, so derivative of that would be 7. Derivative of a constant is 0, and so that checks out. I'm going to go to C. I'm going to skip B. I want you to try B on your own, and I want you to try D on your own, okay? I'm going to try C. All right, now we have the function f of x equals x squared plus x, and I want to find the antiderivative or capital F of X. And so I've got to think what function has a derivative equal to X squared. All right. And remember when we do our derivatives, for instance, these are like of X to the N, right? We usually end up with N times X to the N minus one. So when we take the derivative, our derivative is going to have a power less than what we start with. And what we're doing here is we want to find the actual antiderivative or this thing that we're starting with here. I know it's a little confusing. We want to work backwards. All right. And so usually when we want to find our antiderivative, we actually, instead of decreasing our exponent, we increase our exponent. So I'm going to increase the exponent there. And as you can tell, normally if I try to take the derivative of this thing, I'm normally bringing the three out front and I'll end up with a two there. All right. Because I normally have this piece in my derivative, what we normally do is we'll divide that by the same exponent that we raise our power to. And we'll see when we check that we get this antiderivative. All right. I know it's a little weird, but we'll see. Now I'm going to go to this part of my function here, x. Right now it has an exponent of 1. I want to know which function, if I take the derivative of it, I end up with an exponent of 1. Right? Well, it had to have started with an exponent of 2 because normally when we take the derivative, we bring the 2 out front and we subtract that exponent to get 2. But since we don't have that 2 out front, I'm going to divide by 2 and hopefully my math will work out, right? So I'm kind of going to kind of undo all of these things. Instead of like when we normally take the derivative of x to the n, We'll bring that n out front as a multiplication, and we'll reduce the exponent by 1. Well, since I'm finding the antiderivative, I've got to undo all of that. And so instead of multiplying by that n right there, I'm going to divide by that n. And instead of adding there, I'm sorry, subtracting there, I'm going to add. And that's where that's where, why I get to a statement that looks like that. All right. Now, I'm going to check myself to make sure I did that right. So I'm going to try to take the derivative of this thing, um, f prime, my antiderivative. And I take the derivative of that. I bring the 3 out front. I have my x. I reduce my exponent by 2. I still have that 3 in the denominator there. And I bring my 2 out front as my exponent. Reduce the power by 1. I still have that power there. Notice I left off the plus c here, which is always sitting up there. But this is, in fact, one antiderivative. When I put this plus c there, I'm given the entire family of derivatives, antiderivatives, okay? But when I take the derivative of that plus c, it's going to be 0. Notice these 3s cancel, that those 2s cancel, and I get x squared plus x, which is what I started with, right? So the antiderivative for x squared plus x will be x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus some constant c. All right? I hope that that makes sense. I'm going to come with part two of the video next.